Hey guys, uh, like I have done in previous videos, if I'm going to make a video that even approximates anything like a ponage style video, I'm going to uh, do some self-deprecating humor before I begin. And so this time I'm just going to open my Joanne app here and uh, just let you guys know that this uh, whole Memorial Day sale on... Uh, uh, Memorial Day from Joanne is is shit. It's like 20% off your total purchase. Sometimes they send send out like 40% off your total purchase on odd days, right? But if I go down to uh, get the new coupons, I, I'm going to point out here, this 40% off any one regular priced item, this is a coupon I might actually use, but you guys might have seen me tweet out like my whole shopping cart full of uh, paintings, or, or sorry, canvases for paintings. And uh, if I only have the ability to use it once at a time, I will, I will fucking walk in and out of the store like six or seven times just to use the same fucking coupon over and over again. So there's your, your self-deprecating humor. You know why cheap guys like me have big noses? It's because fucking air is free. That's why. Okay, so... Let us begin. Uh, let me put some video of me in this. And turn the camera around. There we go. There we go. There I am in my own video. Sorry for the, uh, the portrait style, but this is how uh, social media uh, works. If you're on your phone, you can switch your phone to portrait style and get like full screen uh, when I do these kinds of recordings. Um, but if you're on a computer, sorry for, you know, the whole filler shit on the sides. Uh, this is chapter three of the ongoing saga, saga of Prestaclaws contacting me. And, uh, uh, so Preston Hudman, he once again wants to talk. He unblocked me and, uh, sent me some messages this morning. And so we're going to have part three of this. All right. So, uh, just so in case you didn't see part one and two, uh, part one would be how the YouTube dream can drive you crazy. I've made that two weeks ago. And then last week there was YouTube fame crazy part two, where, uh, Presta Claus was wearing no clothes. Uh, but at least he wasn't wearing a, a skeleton mask in the bathtub like he did in part one. So uh, now let's go ahead and see what Presta Claus had to say today. If you don't like how cluttered my, my phone is sometimes, then, uh, well, GTFO. <laughs> it's my phone. All right, so it was a long thread. So this morning, it started at 3.09 a.m. I'm not hating on the time because I'm, I'm a sometimes night shift worker anyway. And, uh, you know, you can never tell when I'm going to be awake. So it's okay to send me messages through odd hours. I will answer when I get a chance. And then 5.18 a.m. I responded. So he said, I unblocked you because I related myself to you somehow. I'm fine with it if you are. Did you buy subs from Psyka? If you did, that would explain it. You're not the worst person to be clustered with, so yeah. Want to be friends yet? So I responded, I didn't buy subs. I don't know who Psyka is. How would that explain how you related yourself to me? So he responds, now, this response, mind you, is an hour later, right? I, I responded at 5.18 a.m. He responds 6.13 a.m. And around that time, uh, on days like this, I'm making breakfast for my girlfriend. I'm feeding my dogs. I'm, I'm around the house doing shit. I'm not very immediately available. Keep that in mind. And I, I actually intentionally did at least three sentences when I, when I first responded to him. Because he really doesn't like when I'm short with him and only do like one sentence at a time. As you guys have seen, 
uh, in previous videos. He really overreacts to that, and he reads into that. So I put three sentences. Uh, <laughs> so he says, Oh yeah, I forgot. I'm on the cutting edge and beyond, and I'm talking about things nobody knows about. My bad. <laughs> well, I guess I will tell you because I aim to impress... I have a 10-minute video on Facebook about channel clusters, and that will explain that as well as the death of subcounts. Took a few days, but I'm nearing Caillou finished. I think that's nearly finished. But the one on Facebook was a demo for Saika. Saika sells subs cheap because of me. They are kind of my sponsor. They sell... To many famous YouTubers, no doubt, because look at Social Blade. Anyways, I will give you the choice of either ex me explaining it in writing, but it will be a lot, or you can be my friend on Facebook so I can share it privately. I cannot let it be public. I'm bound to this rule. I don't mind explaining it, but it takes a while. It's intri intricate. Okay, that was an hour after I had said anything to him. And then I saw that my phone was buzzing as I was uh, making coffee and uh, cooking breakfast. Or you could just wait until tomorrow. I'm thinking I will publish it then. But if it's something you want to see to maybe help seeing as how this video is literally the only... Fucking goddamn fucking hope we're got, dude. They're fucking get away with it all. They're, they're gonna fucking get away with it all. And kill the sub counts. And watch them shut the door in my face. They have a vendetta against me. And stock my every move for three years. As I've said in previous videos guy thinks a lot of himself like he you know how many uh prestons it takes to screw in a light bulb just one all he's got to do is hold up the light bulb in the air and the world revolves around him <laughs> okay <laughs> screws itself in that way all right um <clears throat> so there's this big flurry that happens uh, by 6.20 a.m. So that's five minutes later. Okay, five minutes he can't wait for me to, to respond, even though he took a whole hour after I said anything. And he starts being the caps lock commando. He says, if you don't see it and want to help, you are the most anti-YouTube jerk ever because everything I say about YouTube is true and you're doing nothing for years while I do everything and change the fucking world. Sub crossover, you ever heard of it? Hey, 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 hey. Sub crossover, you ever heard of it? Sub crossover, you ever heard of it? Sub crossover, sub crossover, sub crossover, sub crossover? I'm glad I have no friends because my plan was to get relocated to Roberto and smear him, but I'm stuck to you first, so should I smear you? No, because you're dull. <laughs> okay. Because I didn't fucking respond in five minutes. Okay. Now he says, you seem to think it's some kind of ruse every time when it's literally me not able to let Google see this video and they get notified of everything they do my shit manually, dog. They watch my shit every time. They are my only audience. I basically make videos for them to counter, so in a way I have created YouTube itself. But because of them, nobody knows me. Fuck you! You're gonna wish you were cooler because shit's going down and you're nobody. And you won't even have a YouTube to be a nobody on if you don't help. But I guess you don't want that either, so fuck it. I warned you, when you're history and I'm the cause of it, don't hang yourself. 
Well, at least he's like one step better than an anti-SJW who might tell me to actually kill myself. This guy's telling me not to because he knows that I'm going to be sad when I guess I won't be in the, the cool kids club. Okay, um, so I responded. Mind you, I, I used more than one sentence here just because I know he, he overreacts when, I, when I'm short. So I said, so there's a YouTube video. So there's a video you want me to watch on Facebook. Do you have a link? Right? You know, just following him. You know, coming alongside of him. That's what we would say in, in the psychotherapy world. You know, let's let's see where this goes. LOL. No fuck off. Wait. Okay, I need to send you a friend request because the video is secret. Now, guys, at this point, I was thinking, is this just all an elaborate ruse to get a Facebook friend? Because <laughs> it's, it's not that hard, really. You just send out a, a bunch of requests and somebody's going to bite. But, oh well, you know, I've got like 3,000 Facebook friends on my uh, YouTube-related Facebook account. So uh, it's, it's not a big deal for me to add another, but I was like, okay, whatever. My Facebook account is facebook.com slash agent of doubt. Branded, motherfuckers, branded. It's the one I use for all the crazies. If you're friends to that account, you, you could be counted uh, amongst the crazies. He responds... You will see I never lie. I'm just crazy because of Google. Goddamn. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> okay, I sent a friend request. When you accept it, I can let me share the video. Okay. Dude, why did you leave me hanging? It takes up my time, dude. Just get it over with so I can fucking link you the fucking thing, bro. Okay, this is like three minutes later. Three minutes and the dude goes fucking stir crazy. Right? And he says thank you. That's because I actually accepted his friend request. And let's just open uh, my Facebook messenger so you, can, you guys can follow along the whole way. Um... Because he, I guess, didn't see that I accepted his friend request, I waved to him. I pushed the little wave button. And then he says, enjoy the lesson. If you ever want to step your thumbnail game up, I can help you or make them. I was told today that I'm really good at it by Erica Grier. She's got a website called Prophecy Talk. Well, that's probably just another rabbit hole to go down. We'll save that one for later. But uh, he sent me a picture of hashtag stop the channel clusters. It's got some money on it. Oh, look, there's scarce. Somebody who plays Call of Duty, Drama Alert, H3H3, PewDiePie. Is that Preston's account? Third from the left on the top? I think it is. I don't recognize most of the others. So, yeah, that's, that's a good thumbnail, I think. I mean, the, the, the words pop. The, the, the key to a good thumbnail, even though I never fucking do this because I, I really loathe uh, fame formulas and I, I really don't like manipulating you guys, but one of the keys to making a good thumbnail is uh, shadow boxing the letters. Uh, and if you use not red so much, but if you use white bold letters and yellow bold letters, it works really well on thumbnails. For some reason, red doesn't work as well, even though uh, red and yellow are more the uh, attack colors in psychology. You know, that's why Wendy's and, and McDonald's and Burger King have a lot of red and yellow in their logos. Uh, KFC's got red in the logo, you know. It's basically the hunger, attack, uh, get your attention colors. But white and yellow seem to work the best on YouTube. There's been a lot of uh, studies on that. Anyways, back to my Twitter. <sighs> okay, so 
He says, I think you should be able to get to it, but hold on. And then he sends me the link to it. And the last thing he says is, I'm glad you got to see the extended version because the one tomorrow is going to be a lot shorter and a lot different. So you got more info on this one. All right. So I'm going to play that link for you guys at the end of this video. Right. That'll be the last thing I do. It's uh, I've seen that it's a 15 minute long video and I might pause it to interject it a couple times. But before I do that, I did get another message at around the same time. And that was from uh, Ben. Uh, well, yeah, he's stalking me, but I'm not the one who brought this infection into our <clears throat> cluster. That was Quintica. Everybody go to Quintica's channel and, and, and blame him. It's all Quintica's fault. I'm just following the rabbit hole to where it goes, okay? And I said, yeah, round three started today. And then he responded, uh, LOL, I wish Block worked the same as years ago. Now he can remain subscribed, but his comments will be blocked. And I gave him a little up thumb. And then, and then he sends me this. You're in his cluster. <laughs> God damn. I'm going to hate this word cluster. But I look at the at the picture he sends me, right? And uh, in Preston's recommended channels, right here, his related channels, there's I Apple Out and Agent of Doubt. And this isn't something that he's added me to. This isn't like the the cool box that other people have, like I have on my own channel page. This is YouTube now uh, associates me with uh, Preston, so. That's wonderful. <laughs> and then Ben says, I think he lives at home because he's making a video and someone is vacuuming behind him. LOL. Okay. Mommies and daddies out there, if you've got a uh, person who's maybe a little on the spectrum, maybe uh, a little obsessed with YouTube, and they love making YouTube videos, please, you know... <clears throat> I'm not saying don't clean up after them. Maybe maybe try to get them involved in the cleaning. And maybe if you let them get involved, they'll start doing the cleaning in between their takes for, for filming. Maybe if you, if you uh, contract with them and say, hey, I won't make vacuuming sounds during your video if you vacuum in between when you're making the video. I'll just leave the vacuum out for you. Right? I'll set it up. I'll even plug it in for you. Just, you know, help out a little. <clears throat> you know, that way you're not, uh, you know, you're, you're not going to be enabling th their uh, psychosis. <laughs> you know, you got to think about self-care, you know, when you're dealing with uh, having somebody who lives in your basement and uh, makes YouTube videos and, and eats your food and, and doesn't clean up after themselves. Okay, so back to the link that he sent me. This is going to be a 15-minute uh, video, I think. And uh, this is the, the top secret video that if Google were to get a hold of this video, we don't know uh, what bad things might happen. So he hasn't released it on, on, on Google. He's had, had it privated on Facebook. World premiere. Uh, top secret exposed by agent of doubt by the way don't trust anyone who has the word agent in their name for whatever reason uh if you have no idea uh who they are and you're not even watching the videos that they've been putting out be <laughs> yeah that's this is the weird thing he subscribed to me he could have seen that i made part uh one and part two of this series you know maybe this is just 4D chess, and he's trying to get exposure for his video on my channel. I don't know. Let's see where this crazy goes, people. <laughs> Let's see. Play. The subscriber clusters are something that's been around forever. Oh, don't pee on We're that. Just learning about it now. Oh, you're peeing on that. But they're now revealing how it's always worked and putting a spin on it because they want to get us to do something bad. Very bad. Very, very bad. 
subscriber clusters, what are they? They are these groups. Basically, it's YouTube putting the popular kids together. You can get put into a really good power cluster. Everybody in the... Was, was that a... Uh... Was was that a gun, like a real gun, or like one of those guns that gets connected to like a VR system? I don't know. Cluster gets views. They can treat this cluster like just one being that they grow. Videos help grow okay. channels. That was a movie clip. That makes me feel a lot better that it's just a movie clip and Preston doesn't have an arsenal. Um. <laughs> this is you. How do you create these clusters? Well, you got to become related to other channels. How do you do that? It's called subscriber crossover. What does that mean? It means subscribers that you both have in common. People that are subscribed to both of you. So if you can get 5,000 of your own subscribers to go subscribe to him, you will become related. But there's an easier way. And it's very cheap. Especially for some rich YouTubers. Okay? How do you do it? Well, as it turns out, if you buy subscribers for yourself, and then at the same exact time, from the same exact place, you buy subscribers for somebody else, guess what? They send you both the same ones and you become related. And that's how they've all been doing it. That's how they can control it. Coupled with the fact that YouTube can just pluck you out of one at will. They've been getting their explosive growth this way by being a part of these clusters that they can control. Very easily, I might add, because it's so cheap. So now they're going to come clean about it so that you can do it too. But if we do this, if we actually buy subscribers openly for these other people, train your time. When I say openly, I mean let people know. Like if it goes viral, we can't let that happen. We can't let the world realize that they should be buying subscribers for the people they want to relate to. Because if they do that, the people who have lied to you and been buying their followers the whole time, every famous YouTuber, is going to be able to walk away clean because they'll just play dumb and say, oh, we couldn't stop you guys from just ruining the subscriber count completely. They're going to convince us to buy subs and then blame it on us. Blame it on the people abusing it and misusing it. The fake news headline will read, famous YouTubers all gaining millions, billions, whatever the number is, because everybody is buying them these subs that are now so cheap because we can all afford it and we all want to grow that. And then they're going to say, look, Everybody's got fake numbers now. They're worth nothing. Subscriber counts die. It dies before the world could acknowledge the fact that all of them are fake and that all the numbers are 90% fake. They go out on top as if they're really still famous. And they're the only ones who are famous. The day's going to come when YouTube has to basically take all these famous people that lie to us and be like, so we didn't tell you about this thing that everybody ended up doing. So how can we somehow get away with that without you hating us, right? How are we going to make it so you still think we're a guru? When the guru lied to you and you know it. When you literally know what everybody else knows. Because it will become a knowledge eventually. It's inevitable. They have to have a plan. They have to have backup excuses ready. Roberto Blake has one. Okay, people. <clears throat> Let me just put myself back on camera for a second. So, YouTube already has something built into its algorithm currently that uh, it really negatively affects people who buy subscribers. And that is uh, engagement is a large part of the algorithm. Uh, the way this works is YouTube does not show every one of your subscribers a video, right? If you put up a video, a sample of your subscribed people will get it in their feed and if enough people click on it, then it goes out to a larger sample of your subscribers. And enough people click on that, then it goes out to the total amount of your subscribers uh, on their uh, Watch Now page or on their you know notifications. But if that first initial sample of people, let's say you have over 10,000 subscribers like me, and that sample of 100 goes out and not enough people click on it, say less than 10, it's not going to go out to the subscriptions feed of all the rest of your subscribers, right? So uh, I run into this problem now 
because I did a little bit of research on sub for sub. I did a little bit of research on things that Happy Cabby was doing to try to get some channels shut down by uh, basically purchasing subscribers for them and then uh, reporting those channels as being uh, fraudulent, right? This was a, a thing that people could do to get a person's channel terminated was to show that, that somebody had a spike in uh, subscribers and then uh, what, what, what happened there? Okay, never mind. I uh, I figured it out. If I don't uh, actually push record on the video function from my phone, then you know this thing that I've been using just to put myself on screen just for a little bit, it actually times out. So uh, I I figured that part out. Um, <laughs> back to my point. Um, I've suspected for a long time that part of the reason why my channel was gimped for a while was because I had some fake subscribers uh, added to it. Both uh, legacy dead accounts from having a 10-year-old account here on YouTube. Uh, and also, I felt like uh, somebody had done, just like uh, Preston has said in his video that we're watching, somebody had purchased subscribers for me. Now, um, around the same time as that happened to me, I made a, uh, an expose video about Happy Cabby having a, a large jump in subscribers in the history of his channel, there was this giant spike of subscribers that did not accompany a spike in viewership, right? And this is something that you can look on uh, Social Blade and graph out someone's channel and actually see for yourself. If they get a spike of viewership on the same day that they get the spike of subscribers, then you can tell, well, you know, after they got this spike of subscribers, they started getting a few more views each day. Then it looks a little bit more real, but Happy Cabby had a spike of like 10,000 one day and nothing. No new viewership. Every time he put out videos after that, it was uh, basically along the same paths as if he never had gained those 10,000 subscribers. So I can trace back a lot of uh, my subscriber gro growth to uh, individual videos. In fact, um, one of my videos gained me about 3,000 subscribers from Thunderfoot right? So I, I can see the growth patterns on, on my own channel, but I felt like over time, maybe I had uh, gained some subscribers in, in a way that they were just dead. Or uh, because of the, the flagging wars that have happened on YouTube before, uh, some of my friends who have lost a whole bunch of channels, each one of their channels was subscribed to me and it just wasn't culled, you know. And so for the longest time, I've been wanting YouTube to go back to the old system where if you block someone, you could remove their subscription to you. When YouTube went to this system of you can't remove somebody who subscribed to you, it fucked me. Because I want to go through my entire subscriptions list and cull a couple thousand out. I'm at around 11,000 subscribers right now. And I want to cull about probably 4,000, I think, that I, I probably can't really justify them being subscribed to me. They've never left a comment on my video. Basically, if I don't uh, recognize the person, I want to just do a culling. Like... Uh, remove those subscriptions because there's been too much shady shit going on. And part of it was I was looking into uh, people who were uh, accused of doing sub for sub. And by doing that, I associated my channels with them, um, either by leaving comments and whatnot. And then I feel like these uh, uh, sub for sub scamming places, they will actually subscribe to real channels with their bots as well as uh, fake channels or, or people that are their uh, customers. And what they're doing is they're hiding their bot's existence by by spreading it out. So that way, uh, YouTube can't just say, oh, well, everyone this bot is subscribed to must have paid for it. You know, instead of uh, letting their bots be, uh, their, their customers be identified that way and then have their channel shut down, they've been... Uh, 
they've been hiding who their their customers are by also subscribing to say the top 100 YouTubers and then a set list of people who th they want to throw shade on you know and so i figure based on the amount of viewership that i get and uh, how many subscribers i have i need to cull like 4000 of my subscribers like almost half of my subscribers I just want to get rid of because I feel like it affects me in the algorithm because that first 100 people that it gets sent out to that are like the test market, you want more of them to click on your video. You want real subscribers and then you get sub suggested to the rest of your subscribers. Well, if you have a whole bunch of dead accounts or accounts that don't give you interaction, then you're not going to be suggested to the rest of your real subscribers. So... I'm one of those people who actually wants to uh, just scrub my subscriber list. I don't want to lose my account to do this. But I've seen other people um, completely restart themselves on YouTube by starting a new channel and have way better growth in those first few weeks on their new channel because they don't have uh, this dead account you know, baggage that they had before. And th this is one of the bonuses to actually having your channel terminated is that if you restart on a different channel, you get that initial boost of everyone who subscribed to you actually gets to see your shit because the, the test market it gets sent out to is all real people for the first couple of weeks before you start getting saddled with fake accounts again. And I want to get back to that on my channel. And uh, YouTube has, in their changes, removed the ability to do that. So uh, that's enough of an aside for this one. Um, let's see. Back to Twitter, where he posted it to me. All right. We were, we were about uh, three, any, three minutes YouTube's in. not even going to make up an excuse. They're just going to make it like, oh, well, it's all screwed up now. We'll never know. And they can't do it now. They got to change it now. So look for YouTube to act, to react to this. I think YouTube's going to react to the shit I just said. Okay, breaking news update. YouTube help has actually deleted or removed or made private the uh, video called Let's Talk About Subscriptions. Could it be because I put them on blast? Or maybe it's because they're going to get rid of sub counts and there's no reason to talk about subscriptions anymore. We're going to talk about channel clusters today. Um, I've never publicly talked about this, and it's something that most content creators have no clue what's going on. And so what I want to do is explain how YouTube really, uh, really goes to promote a channel um, and, and how that relationship is. And once you start realizing that, and then I'm going to show you tactics to leverage it. Does that sound good? Whatever channel you're at, what YouTube does is they want to know what's going on in, in YouTube, how you relate to other channels. Now, when you start a brand new channel, they don't have any data. And the more data that we give YouTube, then it starts to pull it together. But what I have, uh, I'm, I'm going to explain, and the Sherry brothers tomorrow uh, are going to explain this too, is how to get related channels to show up with you in, in a cluster. Now, YouTube does clusters, and they, they group you with other channels. And what happens is, synergistically, these channels work and grow together. And as one channel succeeds, the whole group succeeds. So videos grow channels, and channels connect with other channels. So we have suggested traffic, how to suggest. You can see that there are no more suggestions uh, for that creator. You're probably wondering, where is my views going? Well, the bottom fell out of your suggestions that's going on. They're going to look close to the creators in that region. That's the first place that they look. So you, they'll get similar content creators around your channel that have some, some uh, similar data. Now, we're not just talking subscriber data. We're talking about similar content and viewer be, viewing behavior, viewer behavior. And once they start getting it together, they start putting this cluster together. Now, um, what's really interesting is the last thing that's on here is sub crossover. And I, I know a lot of you might say, oh, it's just a subscriber crossover is how to get related to another channel. And I'm telling you, it's not. Well, dudes, I'm telling you it is. You can literally go buy $10 worth of subs right now. Split it between you and the person of your choice. 
and voila, you're related, guy. It's one of the one of the factors. But what YouTube's looking at is multiple factors, and it's based off of the viewer, where the viewer is, how they're engaging on YouTube, how they're interacting with content, and what they do next. Then the next thing they look at is the channel specifically, the metadata, the content they're producing, how much content they're producing, and the type of engagement that they have. And then they're looking at the uh, subscriber, uh, you know, uh, crossover. You literally cannot just stop himself uh, from me, breaking up when one he's thing real going quick over here, the parts that he knows really untrue. Um, there is a new uh, engine happening. Uh, when you create a new playlist, he just cannot be the same, can't, can't have the same. He's like, I can't quite remember what YouTube just told me on the phone. Of the video. <laughs> if you try to keyword stuff it at all, it will flag you now. Well, the bottom fell out of your suggestions that's going on. Now, um, I do have a client <laughs> um, that is very popular and they, they have good audience retention. They own all 20 spots of the 20 suggestions you can get. And it's possible to do it if you understand how to navigate people through your content and you're being a little bit more strategic says, oh, I'll just throw up this card. But you're being more strategic in some of your, uh, some of your processes. So you could blame that on mobile because there's more mobile viewers and the way that YouTube uh, interacts with content, it's 100% mobile's fault. So if you don't like it, just smash your phone and walk out. But it is a good thing, guys. I, I'm here to tell you, I, it is really, really good. Wow, he's going to throw up a YouTube card because his processes are so detailed. Like, oh, wait, you know, I need to, oh, this is just crazy. Okay, smash my phone, check. What's step two, Daryl? Get thousands of views and make sure each view lasts for at least 84% of the video? Check, double check. What's the next step, Daryl? What, buy you a hoagie sandwich? I'm not buying you a hoagie sandwich, Daryl. Okay, so wait a minute. This guy just lies in public like all day long. Why is he getting paid to lie in public like this? No, Daryl, no tacos. I'm not buying you anything, Daryl. I mean, come on, he straight up said it's mobile's fault that we're not getting suggested anymore. Are you sure it's not that YouTube does channel clusters? Okay, you got your tacos. You got your hoagie. Now, what's the next step, Daryl? <laughs> Subscribers? What do you take me for? An idiot? Come on, what's the next step, for real? You're serious? I have to buy subscribers for them? YouTube says that if they can't find any similar channels, they will instead just put popular channels here. How do they determine who to show, right? Well, guess what? Okay. Um, <clears throat> I've had some feelings building up about his video at this point. We're, we're nine minutes into his video. Um, I'm just going to go to my own uh, YouTube feed, and I'll show you, like, basically uh, a, another self-deprecating moment here. The reason why I don't get the viewership that I once used to get is because I changed my content, okay? If you want good growth on YouTube, don't be all the fuck over the place like I am. Like, seriously, later on today is the Mega Crab event in Boob Beach, a game that I have been playing secretly for a lot, very long time, and then I just put out a, a little bit of content on that, and people are like, wow. I never expected this from you. If you do things that people don't expect from you, they're not going to keep on clicking, right? And I'm going to show you an example here, okay? I'm going to go to my own YouTube app, go to, to my videos here, right? So when I talk about the, the friends that I meet locally, like King Cordova, I get 60 views. When I talk about uh, my career, and some of the hardships that I go through, I get 68 views. Uh, when I talk about politics, like Warren running for president, maybe in 2020, 97 views, right? Cobra Kai review, that was uh, 165 views. That's a little bit more. Talking about people who uh, are uh, maybe crazy on YouTube, about 155 views. Talk about some shit about another YouTuber, like thoughts on bearing. I just put this up 14 hours ago, you know, five times the views, maybe 10 times the views of some of my other work, right? Why is that, right? 
let's uh, get me on camera to say this right here. The reason why is because I used to talk shit about a lot of other YouTubers. I used to put their names in a lot of my uh, titles of my videos, right? People subscribed me for me talking shit about other YouTubers. That's what they want to see. And so my subscriber base that subscribed to me, when, when that sample goes out to the first 100 people, most of those people are only subscribed to me to hear ponage or me talk shit about other YouTubers. And if I'm not doing that, nobody wants to watch. So then, if that first 100, it doesn't go well with them, it doesn't get presented to the rest of my subscribers. That's it. The whole reason why most of us are experiencing low traffic is because we tried to change our content. We tried to grow as human beings, and if you do that, you're going to experience stagnant growth, growth. Whereas if you are stagnant as a person and you keep harping on the same shit over and over again, <clears throat> like Baron, you know, if you pick a target and just keep on railing at it, you're going to get better growth on YouTube. <sighs> that off my chest. Um, let's go back to uh, Preston's video. And let's see. No, no, no. Where did I put it? Uh, and we were nine minutes in. Subscriber club. I think we're not getting... Everybody you see right now, they will, uh, if they go. can't find any similar channels, they will instead just put popular channels here. How do they determine who to show, right? Well, guess what? This channel, they got related to PewDiePie is obviously still related to him because if you go to his channel and you look at his related channel section it's full of the same exact people in my popular channel section ninja markiplier jacksepticeye even the ones that aren't related to me and pewdiepie or whatever if you go to their channel they are too related to pewdiepie everybody you see right here is connected in one way shape or form down the line game grumps game theorists pewdiepie h3 idubs me presty claws Ali A, Ninja, I have shown you every one of their related channel sections in this video. If you go back and you pay attention and you look, you're going to see what I mean. Here's my favorite channel, BSTV. It's got no content. As you can see right here, it doesn't have any. It's got 117,000 subscribers though. Why? Because it's the best channel. I totally get it. It's a black screen. It's a black screen because he's only got four letters in his name now. And he's got no videos. So it's not even a screen. That's awesome. Okay, BS TV, or I mean no screen TV, he's got to change it. He's got to change it to no screen. It just makes no sense being BS when it's no screen. Come on. Or NS. NS, I guess, if you have to keep it four letters. But uh, anyways, if you, if you go to his about section, he joined on January 28th, 2017. Wait a minute. That's the day. Let's just look at this creator studio thing right here. Wait a minute. I thought I saw something on here. Hold on just a minute. Ooh, January 28th at 5.20 p.m. Because look, that's the day I uploaded my video. So because you probably haven't seen any of my videos before and have no idea who I am, and that's going to stay like that forever, please go watch the at Roberto Blake Twitter messages video right away, followed by all the other videos right away. Thank you. Okay, so I did watch that video, uh, and uh, we watched it in a previous video in this series. And what I'm going to say is, this does not prove at all that the person who made the, the black screen TV uh, channel has anything to do with YouTube. It could have been just somebody that was uh, maybe inspired by Preston, or it could have just been coincidence. You know, uh, I, I, I tell you, people who are batshit crazy... They, they really love numerology. They really love uh, dates and, and whatnot. And uh, coincidences are never coincidences for them. Um, correlation does not imply causation, Preston. And uh, yeah, let's go on. This is a channel cluster. What this means is those 117,000 subs are also subscribed 
to H3 and R dots. I feel like I'm missing something here. It's just a temporary bug in the displayed subscriber count. YouTube will fix it in a day or two. What the fuck is this guy freaking out over? Witness the world of history? Exactly, it's like, what? This is actually crazy, goddamn. Tan's gonna be serious, like, that's so dumb. Tan, oh no, god damn. Team YouTube have since clarified that the glitch does not mean actual subscribers are lost, as it's only the count that is incorrect at the moment. That issue seems to have been resolved now as well, with the likes of Tana, Felix, Ethan, Leafy, and Keemstar getting all their subscribers back, and then some. However, it's interesting to point out that during the saga, creators like Idubs TV and Zoella didn't lose a single subscriber. But yeah, basically YouTube created this channel called BSTV the same day I uploaded my video, because in my video, I exposed negative sub counts for the first time ever. Not only that, but I tracked the location of my subs before and after the unsub bug removed some. And to record that data in real time before it has had a chance to update in two days, that is what YouTube could no longer allow us to do. So when they did the latest subscriber analytics update that happened back in September 2017, if you don't quite remember, it was when they added all those additional sources. But that was not the reason for the update. The real reason was because they took away the ability to see the analytics in real time. Because doing that makes it so we can't track the location data in real time. Therefore, we can only see the updated version, which has been falsified. But wait, I'm not done. If that weren't enough, I also exposed Roberto Blake in the same video. I explained that he's trying to keep us away from the silver play button by convincing us to make our sub counts private. Because you can't buy subs when it's private. I even predicted what his reason for keeping us away from the silver play button was, and what the play button actually means and how important it actually is. And keep in mind, this was two years ago. I said that the silver play button is going to be the checkpoint that you got to reach in order to be allowed into the new paid site. Because it's inevitable that YouTube's going to have to become a pay-only site. And they're going to make us pay to watch YouTubers. And if you want to become a paid YouTuber, you have to have a silver play button. And since then, they've basically gotten rid of all monetization, or at least they never have to pay anybody out for it. And they're pretty much not accepting new people because the requirements are so tough and nobody knows about buying views and shit. And now they just announced a new way to get paid as a YouTuber. It's called the Sponsors Program. Except it's only available to those who have 100k. And what a coincidence that Roberto wants to be my friend all of a sudden. And wants to convince me that, you know, there's nothing special about the button. He pushed it to the limit. Like the song goes. Welcome to the limit. stream on Twitter either because you blocked me. You know the one that you did when we were talking on Twitter in a private conversation and then you went and did a live stream simultaneously while we were talking and told everybody I was a faggot and then said, oh, everybody agrees you're a faggot, haha. Huh? And I'm just sitting there like, well, that's great. To be continued, I'm going to wreck Roberto Blake. Okay. Um, so here are my thoughts on... Look at my hanging plant right there. Um, <clears throat> here are my thoughts on that. Uh, why would YouTube want to limit the, the number of people that can make money through them when uh, it's basically based on ad revenue and viewership? You know, why are they? Why do they need to limit things like that? And I, I've seen uh, recently they limited. Like who's uh, eligible for the partner program, and they they put these really really low bars to entry into it. Now some people are saying, oh, it's very it's so high. You know, you've got to have this many like a thousand subscribers and uh, like four thousand uh, minutes of of viewership or something. You know what? I made it. You know, I'm no I'm nowhere near the top of the YouTube peep, and I still made it. You know, and uh, I have problems with my subscriber base being part fake, you know, and I can't do anything about it because YouTube basically put into place this uh, mechanism whereby anyone who buys subscribers is penalized for it, right? Anyone who has fake subscribers added onto their shit is penalized for it. Anybody who has a 10 year old account. And all of your subscribers have either changed you, uh, YouTube uh, accounts 
or changed their email address and lost their YouTube account or whatnot, all of those people get penalized for having old channels because you cannot cull your own subscribers. Let me tell you about a success story that happened about, oh, two years ago. <clears throat> Aldous Valor, uh, back when he was making videos regularly, he used to keep his subscriber count under 1,000. For every, say, 20 new people that would subscribe to his channel, he would go ahead and cull 20 people, and he was keeping himself just under 1,000 subscribers, right? Well, he, he was around 1,000 subscribers, but he was getting five or 600 views per video. Sometimes his videos would take off a little bit and get a couple thousand more views than he had subscribers. At the same time, I had 10,000 subscribers, and I was getting maybe 200 to 300 views per video. Right? The reason why was because he was culling his subscribers to, ju to be just the people who actually viewed and commented and uh, engaged with him. And that way he was being promoted to the rest of his subscribers. And he was getting far better viewership than I was, even though I was culling, right? So then YouTube starts changing their, their policies on, on what the block button actually does. And it doesn't unsubscribe people anymore. And you can't cull your subscribers list anymore. So now uh, Aldous Valor has more than 1,000 subscribers, which is something he didn't want. And I can't go back and follow his model. You know, everybody who has dead subscribers connected to them is stuck with them. So that's why it is not the right thing to do at all to buy subscribers. You never want to do that. Because what's more important to you? Do you want more people to see your video? Or do you want a fake number that maybe it, it, on the off chance somebody clicks on your channel page, they'll see that you have this one really high number and they might uh, respect you more because of a, a, a number? You know, Wouldn't you want the number that they respect to be the, uh, the number of views per video that you get rather than how many people have quote unquote subscribed to you, you know, especially in a world where just a, a couple of bucks thrown on eBay can fake that subscriber number. You know, you cannot fake the view counts as easily. You could, you could buy yourself a whole bunch of fake subscribers and then on each and every one of your videos, uh, buy a fake view count. You know, that, that would be pretty hard for me to do because I throw up any old content on my channel. Don't spend months on each video. And I have like more than 3,000 videos on this channel alone, right? That'd get really expensive if I was wanting to spend uh, like $10 per video to pump up the view counts like Happy Cabby used to do. Um in fact, Happy Cabby had a rule that he shared with Shayra that any video that had like less than a thousand views, uh, you should delete from your channel, uh, or you need to pump up the viewership of, of it with uh, fake views because he was trying to game the algorithm that way. And he at least was at the point where he was getting like $300 per month from YouTube and reinvesting his YouTube money into his channel. Uh, me, I'm getting like $30, $40 a month. And uh, it's it's buying me uh, maybe a pizza from uh, the local pizza joint <laughs> each month. Uh, thank you, Patreon patrons. You buy the uh, the diet soda that I, I get along with it. Anyways, um, that one's pre that, that was Preston's video. A lot less um, strangeness in there. You know, he he wasn't naked with a uh, skeleton mask in a bathtub. Uh, he was just walking his dog with uh, his dog peeing on something and calling his dog a bad dog. Um, whoever it was, Roberto Blake, uh, I guess he's, he's, he's going to get his one day from Preston. You know? <sighs> 
somebody compared the this series to uh, Mr. Mediocre, and uh, I'll just say that Mr. Mediocre plans these videos out a little bit better than I do, and uh, probably would have a really witty way to close this, but I don't. So, where's the uh, where's the stop button? Until Preston decides to flood my Twitter again, goodbye.